Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. I hope you're all having a great day. We're going to get into a really interesting news article that I found recently that I'd like to elaborate on a little bit. And um, it's not necessarily gun related directly, but mm, it's got some interesting connotations to it. So we're going to get into this one. And before I do, I want to mention real quick, um, look, I know a lot of folks have been asking for more gun reviews and more range stuff and uh, more meltdowns and five guns. We we have more of that on the way, I promise. Uh, we record a lot of these videos and batches and everything like that. And look, we're a small group here. It's a skeleton crew, so please be patient. We are getting to more of that content uh, in due time, I promise. We've got a lot more on the way. Tons of range videos, more air gun reviews, more um, meltdown content, five guns, more gunsmithing, reloading. We're, we're a very diverse channel in terms of the things that we do. So you're going to see some 2A updates. You're going to see gun gripes. We do it all, so uh, be patient. It is coming, I promise. Let's get into this one. Vermont bans owning, running paramilitary training camps. Interesting. All right, let's get into this. Vermont on Monday made it a crime to own or operate paramilitary training camps in the state after Republican Governor Phil Scott signed legislation introduced in response to a firearms training facility built without permits that neighbors called a menace. Oh boy. I'll get on I'll elaborate on that a little bit in a minute. Violators face up to 5 years in prison or a fine up to $50,000 or both according to the law. It prohibits a person from training, teaching, or demonstrating to anyone else the use, application, or making of a firearm, explosive, or incendiary device capable of causing injury or death that will be used in uh, used in or in furtherance of a civil disorder. It also bans a person from assembling with others for training, instructions, or practice. Well, they always make that stuff so wordy. Uh, let's see. The Gun Violence Prevention Group, led by former U.S. Rep. Gabriel Giffords of Arizona, was forced to give up her political career once she was disabled in a 2001, or I'm sorry, 2011 assassination attempt. Praise Vermont's law. Today, Vermont joins 25 of the other states that prohibit firearms training for anti-government paramilitary activity, said Allison Anderman, senior counsel and leader of Gifford's Gun and Democracy Project. Private military activity is illegal in Vermont and has been associated with the intimidation of people exercising their constitutional rights across the U.S., she said by email. This is a common uh, sense policy that will help reduce the spread of dangerous, illegal, and anti-government firearms intimidation. Boy, they're really laying it on thick, aren't they? The Vermont law does not apply to legitimate <laughs> law enforcement activity or lawful activity by Norwich University or any other educational institution where military science is taught. Uh, it also doesn't apply to self-defense instruction or practice without the intent of causing a civil disorder. Uh, firearms instruction that is intended to teach the safe handling and use of firearms and any lawful sports or activities like hunting, target shooting, or firearms collection. In Oregon, which has had its sixth highest number of extremist <laughs> incidents in the county in the last 10 years, the legislature is considering a bill that, according to experts, would make the country's most comprehensive law against paramilitary activity. A failed bill this year in the New Mexico legislature that sought to rein in paramilitary patrols created in recent years to halt um, migrants near the international border with Mexico. A, prim a paramilitary patrol in New Mexico appeared at a protest over a statue of a Spanish conquistador. The owner of the 30-acre firearms training center in southern Vermont has until summer to remove all unpermitted structures on the site in Powlett. Uh, neighbors have complained about the gunfire and they say are threats and intimidation by the owner, Daniel ben Benyai, and his supporters. Uh, the Vermont Environmental Court said that he was in contempt of court for deliberately flouting a series of court orders, uh, let's see, uh, issued since the legal case began in 2019 and now faces jail and fines that could exceed hundred grand if he fails to comply by June 23rd. So... You know, that's a pretty interesting move on their part. I mean, who is to say, all right, so just because some people get together and want to train, right, that somehow means that 
the nature of that training is supposed to be intimidating or supposed to be inciting of some violent activity or, or intimidation of the government. I mean, but then they're going to say, well, if you're a legitimate law enforcement agency, well, see, it's, it's okay for law enforcement to get together and train each other on how to intimidate you. Oh, but the minute you get Joe Blow together to, to train on how to handle firearms properly and how to move as a unit and to respond to violence as a unit, oh, oh no, you evil wrongdoers, there's no way you can do that. I just saw this uh, article, and I thought it was just the craziest thing ever, to think that, you know, there's been legislation introduced in the past where they want to ban body armor, they want to keep you from having the most passive way to protect yourself that there possibly is is body armor, and they want to keep you from having body armor. Even if you don't want to own a gun, if you want to have body armor, they're trying to say, oh, well, having body armor means that you're expecting trouble or, or whatever. What gets me about these people is they're so hypocritical because they don't want Joe Blow having an AR-15. They don't want Joe Blow training. They don't want Joe Blow having good body armor. They don't want you having, you know, the same ammo as them. You notice there's always ammo that the military and law enforcement can get that you can't get, like the M855A1 or the M80A1 or any, uh, like, Ralphus ammo. Like, I can't just call up a distributor and order Ralphus ammo for my 50 or Ralphus 762 ammo or whatever, right? Why is it that the, the, they really always want to make sure that they have a leg up on you, but the Second Amendment really has always been about keeping government in check? And they always ignore that fact, that the Second Amendment is a list of instructions of things the government can't do. Shall not be infringed. It means exactly what it means, right? You know, we had just got done fighting a revolution. We just, you know, went through a really rough time as a country when, at, at the time that, you know, we have the Second Amendment drafted like we just got done fighting a crazy war against a tyrannical government. We had just won our freedom against a, a whole nation that was trying to hold us under their thumb. So you can understand that when you have to look at the way our founding fathers were looking at the situation at the time, right? They wanted to make sure that the instructions were clear that the right of the people to keep and bear arms will never be infringed. And that includes the training and the bearing and use of those firearms keeping and bearing arms, to keep, to keep in good order, to bear, to use, right? They All, all of these so-called constitutional scholars, they try to wrap all this language up. Oh, that's not what they meant. Shall not be infringed. I mean, it doesn't mean anything more than exactly what it says. It's the most clear constitutional language in the entire document. And we see in recent times now that there's a heck of a lot of backlash from the Supreme Court and they seem to have been showing a general interest in wanting to hear more 2A cases. So we can only hope that things like this, you know, will get shot down. And of course, the wording is very ambiguous, right? It's very unclear. You know, someone could show up. You, you could just be training little Johnny on how to use a 22, and the men in black show up in SUVs and go, oh, you're running a paramilitary training camp. You know, it, it's literally their word against yours. Right now, was that to say that this legislation wasn't purposely, you know, set up so that they could go after this guy that was just trying to go like in spite of maybe some ordinances or whatever the case may be, like, you know, maybe he didn't have the proper permits. Maybe it could be true. Look, you know, I have a relative that lives in Vermont and Vermont is kind of a, a weird state when it comes to guns. Because there's a lot of pro-gun people in Vermont, but there's also a heck of a lot of people that don't like guns in Vermont. And even the people that are pro-gun in that state, they're all kind of, like, I hate to say this, they're all like FUDs. They're all kind of, you know, hey, we go and do our hunting and, and crap like that. But, but they don't look at firearms as a, a sense of, like, you know, overbearing self-protection against a tyrannical government. They just don't culturally view the Second Amendment in the same way all of us do. And to be fair, you know, it's, it's, it's not that they don't like guns. They just don't think of it in the same way many of us do. They just haven't gone far enough down the black pill rabbit hole no, uh, enough yet to understand the real lay of the land. And, and that's okay. They'll learn eventually. I mean, you get the government you deserve and you get the government you ask for. So don't be surprised if you ask for tyranny and tyranny comes knocking at the doorstep. So I wanted to share this article because I thought it was pretty pertinent to what's going on. And, you know, this is scary to think that yeah, this is totally in line with some Orwellian type of 1984-esque 
level stuff here. You know, they're trying to control thought. You know, they're trying to basically accuse you of thought crimes before you even do something. They're trying to label you as someone who is violent or extreme or anti-government simply because you want to have the tools and capabilities to protect yourself in any type of bad environment that might come your way, be it, you know, a natural disaster and people start looting and rioting, or maybe society completely breaks down and you want to have command and control and a structure within your community to be able to, you know, protect yourselves and circle the wagon, so to speak. I mean, there's a lot of reasons that you would get training that would be indicative of what one would consider paramilitary training. They make it sound like it's so negative, but at the end of the day, the police do it, the military does it, right, on your dime. So if they can do it, what is the big deal if you're on equal footing with all of them? Especially if, let's say something bad were to happen in your state. And let's say that the military and police and law enforcement in that particular state, like in Georgia, for instance, I'm here in Georgia, you know, we all get along pretty well. We all are pretty, on, you know, on equal footing in terms of like the civilians and law enforcement around here. Like we all get it. We're all armed. It, it's cool, right? If something bad were to happen and we all collectively understood, hey, this is a bad situation. We need to circle the wagons. Well, then wouldn't the police, right, want the local civilians to be able to step in and everyone lend a hand and deal with the problem that's at their doorstep? That's how a lot of people think. So don't think that, you know, the situation in Vermont represents what most people that are into guns think uh, about that type of a training environment all around the country because it's simply not true. I mean, there are many states where, you know, you can get any level of training you want all the way up to, you know, the highest levels of training. You, you can hire ex-CIA guys that'll teach you all kind of crazy stuff if you want to go that route. There's a guy out in Vegas that does that type of training. Uh, there's lots of training. You can go out and learn how to shoot two miles with a 408 if you want. There's training you can take where you can, you know, go learn how to shoot a Barrett M107 and stuff at long range. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So uh, I wanted to share this because it, it's just a dangerous step. It's a step in the wrong direction. And uh, I almost wonder, too, that if something like this could potentially get shot down in terms of its uh, constitutionality being uh, out of step with the Second Amendment, which I think would certainly be um, something worth challenging in court, you know, because I, I think that if you can have firearms and you can have the tools necessary, you obviously need the training necessary to use them. Even if that train, even if you disagree with that training and you don't like what they're doing or what people have to do with firearms, I mean, look, it's just a natural point of contention with life that, you know, sometimes things get to some crazy impasse where you have to use firearms to protect yourself. And you don't want people running around with no training, just shooting at random stuff. Like you want there to be some structure in someone's training regimen so that they can be safe uh, when they're being deadly. <laughs> I mean, let's just put it that way. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Again, y'all, we've got lots of range videos coming. I apologize. We, we've been really, really slammed lately. You know, Chad's been busy running Argos. Um, we just put the rail uh, covers up, the uh, Argos uh, advanced rail covers up on the website. If you want to get some, they're awesome. Chad's doing a great job with these ARs. We've got the 16-inch gun, the 18-inch gun. If you want to support Chad, me, the channel, that's one way you can do so is go to Argos Ordnance, pick yourself up some gear, and support the channel in the process. But he's busy um, standing that up. So uh, I apologize if the output on range stuff is a little lower than normal. I'm working as fast as I can to get that up for you. So bear with me. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. <laughs>